Hello, I am Dr. Ajay Sharma, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Knowledge Park 3, Greater Noida. The subject that I teach in this semester for BTEC and semester students is Optoelectronics and Optical Communication, and this is the main subject for uh, BTEC and semester students. And the topic that I discuss today in this video lecture is Optical Transport Network, OTN, Optical SS Network, Optical Premise Network. Okay, we have to start with our optical uh, network. What is optical network? Actually, optical networks are high capacity telecommunication network based on an optical technologies and components that provide routing, grooming, and restoring of the wavelength level as well as wavelength based service. So basically, this optical network is a combination of uh, different uh, different network technologies, and then uh, the different uh, optical components uh, that providing uh, grooming and restoration uh, at the wavelength level. So basically, optical network uh, has uh, you know uh, fiber optical fiber transmission systems, and of course optical signals, optical fiber, and of of course electrical signals. Ultimately, you need to convert electrical signal into optical signal. So all these things are concerned with this optical uh, network. So uh, as well uh, as far as the optical uh, network architecture is concerned, uh, this is generally uh, a physical arrangement and operational characteristic of a communication equipment together with a common set of uh, communication pro protocol. So basically, numerical architecture, uh, you know. Has uh, arrangement of you know various uh, uh, communication uh, equipments and together with the protocols that uh, should be followed in uh, network architecture. So optical uh, network enables carriers. Uh, optical network enables carriers to deploy an uh, optical service platform into regional and uh, long haul port transport network to maximize. Uh, service flexibility simply network operations. So, <clears throat> uh, basically, optical network architecture. If you look this architecture, you have uh, basically uh, different layers. Uh, you know, look at uh, this section transport network. This transport network come in the picture uh, after. Uh, DWA, DWTM, and SONET. What is SONET? That we already discussed in previous uh, video lectures. Synchronous optical network. And what is DWDM? Dense wavelength division multiplexing. Right? What is PON? Passive optical network that we will discuss later in this lecture. SS network. Then customer premises. Premise. So this customer premise, you know, our buildings, office, you know, multi-story building, houses, these are the customer premise. Shops, these are the customer premise. premise. So they assess the network by access network. They assess the, you know, technology, optical technology through access network, right? And these access networks and customer premise have a part of passive optical and these SS networks, you know, connect with uh, metro networks and, you know, so this is all a long old network, this way. So all these things, you know, all these technologies come together to form a, you know, network, whole network. And this is the optical network architecture. So come to the passive optical networks. In general, there is no OE conversion between the transmitter and the receiver in PON networks. You know, only passive elements used to configure the network. Power budget and rise time calculation has to be done from end to end. Or so there are star, bus, ring, mesh, and tree topology in this network that we already discussed in previous video lectures. So currently, PON access networks are deployed widely, and the word PON means mainly to access a network. So PON will still uh, need higher uh, layer uh, 
protocols like Ethernet, IP, etc., to separate uh, multiple users. So passive optical network, in short, we say PON, PON used uh, WDM uh, over a single bidirectional optical fiber. So in this networking, networking the multiplexing uh, technique that we use in this uh, optical network, or you use a passive optical network is uh, wavelength division multiplexing that we, uh, we, we prefer in the uh, network. So only passive optical components guide traffic from the central office to the customer premises and back to the central office, right? So passive, op passive optical components are used uh, that connect central office to the customer house, customer building, customer shop, uh, or you may say the customer premises. And uh, from customer premises back to the central office. So uh, between the, so these optical uh, passive components are in between uh, customer premises and uh, central office. So in the central office, the uh, combined data and digitized voice are sent downstream to customer by using 49 nanometer wavelength. The upper stream customer to central office use 13 10 nanometer wavelength. So our video services are sent downstream using 15, 15 15 nanometer wavelength. So these are the different windows that are used uh, for you know upper stream and downstream between uh, central office to the uh, customer premises. And as well the video services are concerned, these are using uh, 15, 15 nanometer wavelength, and all these wavelengths are, you know, uh, are mixed in a multiplexer, and you know, and uh, sent by a common channel, which is the optical fiber. So all these wavelengths, you know, uh, utilize the whole band, uh, the whole bandwidth that a particular optical fiber support. So look at this pond. This is look at these. These are different wavelength, different wavelength. This is for voice data. This for Video. So we have lambda one, lambda two, lambda three. This is central office. This is multiplexing. This is the wavelength. It is a multiplex here. There is single common feeder fiber, optical fiber. Then there is a splitter there. You know, L lambda one goes to there, lambda two goes to that house, lambda three goes to that building. And these are the user premises: houses, building, you know, offices, and 30 kilometer. You know, uh, the distance that's shown in this. Network we use a 20 kilometer SMD, right? So passive optical network have these are the these are the optical line terminal having PSTN, the internet, CATV, the optical line terminal, and these are optical network units. And this is passive optical splitters. This is common optical fiber having different wavelengths. So wavelength with the multiplexing over a single fiber. And these are passive optical splitters that split the service you know, on different optical network units. So this is passive optical network. So PON is a kind of passive optical network featuring one to multiple point architecture. So PON is a short for passive optical network. So PON consists of optical line terminal and optical network unit and passive optical splitters. Then, uh, so the optical line terminal OLT at the service provider's central office broadcasts data to several optical ne network terminals at the customer premises through the passive fiber network. And all the ONTs receive the same broadcast data selecting the appropriate portion corresponding to the end user it is serving. So this is central office, these are splitters, these are optical fibers, so these are different optical networks, and these are the uh, you know, uh, customer premises. So this is the architecture of uh, optical access network. So these are BA, FTTC, FTTB, FTTS that we will, we, I just defined in the next slide. These are the optical line termin terminations. These are the customer premises through optical network terminations, right? So. These are the optical fibers. So we will discuss the architecture of optical lesson network in the next slide. Uh, we will discuss the different uh, terms that are used in this architecture. These are the, so from the architecture diagram, the optical lesson network comprises the following uh, scenarios. So we
we have FTTB scenario as an SS scenario for business users, fiber to the business scenario falls into a single business unit and business multi tenant unit in terms of capacity of them. So SPU provides a comparatively small number of ports, including the following ports. So these are the ports that are used by this particular scenario. Then FTTC and FTT cap scenarios as an access to the curve or the cabinet over fiber, fiber to the curve and fiber to the cabinet. Scenario is to be multi-dwelling units, MDUs, providing comparatively large number of ports, including the following ports. So these are the name of the ports that are used in that scenario. Then FTTTH as an access to the home over fiber, fiber to the home scenario is mainly for the single family unit, providing a comparatively small number of ports, including the these are the ports. These are the ports. Now come to optical transport uh, network, OTN. Optical transport network uh, that is G709, that name is given by ITU, International Telecom Union, was designed to transport data packet traffic such as IP and Ethernet over fiber optics, as well as legacy traffic and in particular SONET and SDS. So SONET and SDS are used in that transport network. So it is called the digital wrapper technology because it wraps any client signal in overhead information for operations, administration and management. And the capabilities of optical transport layer is the management, protocol transparency, and asynchronous timing. And this is the hierarchy of OTM optical. This hierarchy divided into two parts, optical and electronics. So this electronics consists of a client in which SONET, SDH, fiber channel, IP, Ethernet, optical channel, payload unit, OPU, optical channel data unit, ODU, optical channel transport unit, OTU. As far as the optic technology, in this opti OTN is optical uh, channels, OCH, optical multiplex section, OMS, optical transmission section, OTS. So this is all about OTN hierarchy that are used in optical transport network. So again, we have a picture of this OTN, you know, circuit switch, packet switch, both uh, coming this networking. So the ITU, International Telecommunication Union, optical transport layer is, is defined. By recommendation G.709 provided a network wide framework that adds SONET SDH like features to WDM equipments and it creates a transparent hierarchical network design for the use on both WDM, uh, WSON devices and TDM devices. So two switching layers are formed TDM and WSON and the function of the transport Multiplexing, routing, management, supervision, and serviability are defined. Now, defined by the recommendation G.0, the OTN creates a transparent hierarchical network design for the use of uh, TDM and WDM. I think this is where we already discussed in uh, previous uh, slide. So, these are the uh, optical transport uh, layer. Start with OTN clients. These are the OTN clients. And SONET SDs are also used there. These are circuit switch or packet switch data may be sent through this switch or packet switch or circuit switch and this is the optical fiber then in between these OTN clients we have optical fiber, regenerators, optical wavelength switch all these are to be used. So the OTN control panel which is based on GMPLs automates many of these functions which corresponding operational benefits related to the statistical provision OTN network. So in optical uh, transport uh, network, so at the basic level, G.701 OTN defines a frame format that wraps data packets in a format quite similar to that of sonnet frame. So the frame is quite similar to the sonnet frame. There are six distinct layers in this format. We have a layer of OPU, optical, or OPU, optical channel payload unit. This contains the encapsulated client data and a header describing the types of data. It is analogous to the path layer. So net of DTS. And second one is ODU optical data unit. This label adds optical path label monitoring, alarms, indications, label, and automatic protection switching. It performs similar function to the line overhead in SONET or DTS. Then OTU optical transport unit. This represents a physical optical port such as uh, OTU2 and adds uh, performance monitoring. It is similar to the sanction overhead in SONET or DTS. 
then OCS optical uh, channel this uh, represent end to end optical path and OMS optical multiplex section this deals with the fixed wavelength and DW dense wavelength division multiplexing between OADMs and optical head drop multiplexing so and then OTS optical transport section this deals with the fixed wavelength and DW DM between relays so the OTN control uh, this is already to discussed now come to optical premise network. Premise means you know end. You know when the communication end. Communication always end with uh, a user. So and where, where the user is to be uh, is to be mined. User mining some building, some offices. So this is the you know customer premises. Customer premises where the customer live, where the customer stay. So optical premise network means fiber to premises. FTTV, also known as fiber to home and fiber to the building. So fiber reaches the boundary of the residential or commercial buildings. Passive optical networks, bonds and point-to-point -point ethernet are architectures that delay, deliver triple play service over FTTF network directly from an operator's central office. So this is a central office and through central office these are, you know, passive optical network, FTTF, they, they all work together and these are the you know, these are the houses or the, the customer premises. These are built. So, this is the optical premise network. Thank you very much.